Hello, everyone. This is Professor Jeff Wilkerson at Luther College bringing you an introduction to graphing basics in Kaleidograph, part of a series of introductions to how to use Kaleidograph, uh, mostly for the students in Physics 182 here at Luther College, but anybody else who might find such things useful. So what we're doing here is hopefully you see a window uh, that I've shared with you. This is a Kaleidograph screen. Um, what, I've, what I've done is I've opened a database of uh, a variable star that we've been studying for 20 plus years here. And you see dates, you see data columns in here. Uh, and we're going to just make some graphs of this and just for no, no other reason than to practice some graphic ideas and how we want to use graphs, how we want to manipulate graphs to make them more interesting, to make them more useful in Kaleidograph. So what I'm going to show you here is, uh, first of all, before we make this graph, uh, I've got various data columns. And if there's data that you don't want, you just mask that out in here. If I don't want that to show up on the graph, I come up under here and say uh, mask right there. And it'll get rid of that data point. If I want to unmask the data point, then I do unmask in there. So I, you'll see that I do have some data points masked out. There are various reasons you might want to do that. You want to be careful about masking out data points. But a lot of times, I'll mask out all kinds of data points just to get a look at what's going on with my data. I'll make 15 different graphs in one uh, session where I sit down with Kaleidograph to look at a data set like this. And I want to see it in different ways. And I want to say, well, what happens if I don't have these points? What do I see? And often I, I'll mask those out if I'm doing fits to the data. We're not going to do any fits to the data today. That'll, that'll come in a, a different video later on. And how to manipulate these data sets will come in a different video uh, at, a, at a different time. So anyway, let's make the graph. Come up here under gallery, under linear. So I always select linear and most of the time, if I'm not making a histogram, I will choose a scatter plot. And the reason I choose a scatter plot is because I don't want to imply to the viewer that I know what's going on between the data points that I actually took. Connecting two data points is generally bad form uh, to say that if you don't know what's happening, plus you don't want to imply that's a functional fit that you're doing. So when you see somebody presenting data where they've connected two, two data points that are widely separated, be suspicious of that. Don't be careful. Your eyes tends to think, that line that's connecting those two data points is telling you what's happening between those two data points when you really don't have any knowledge at all of what's happening between those two data points. So as a general rule, we select scatter plot up here and I'll come down here and on the x-axis, I'm going to select this thing called CJD minus uh, 2452800. doesn't really matter what that is for our purposes. It's something, it's a Julian date, but it's corrected. That's why it says that I'm going to correct magnitude four. It's a measure of the brightness of our stars. I'm going to hit the plot button down here. I got a graph. Woo! Look at that. Um, so a couple of the things that I want to show you that we can do here. First of all, I'm not a fan of those big red circles. So I come up here. You can do this from the from the menu up top here, uh, the plot menu. Uh, you, could, you could do all of this work. But I'm just going to double click on that right there and say, you know what? I don't want that marker to be red. Um, I want that marker to be black. And uh, we'll make the line color black here too, but we don't have a line, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to want that to be black dots, solid dots instead of, uh, instead of uh, open dots. That uh, looks a lot better to my eye, but I think those dots are too big. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to say, you know what, instead of size 12, I'm going to make that size 6. Okay, now that's a lot better to me. Uh, if sometimes I don't want to see those dots at all, if I'm connecting, if I'm making a histogram, for example, and we have another video out there to talk about histograms. And so I can I can make that, I can come up here and I can say, let's actually make this zero or, or, or one, uh, or we can choose the, the little dots right here. Um, let's make them try diamonds. Why not? Let's make them size nine diamonds. See what, ha what that looks like to us. Okay, you play around with that to your heart's content. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is say, okay, now once I'm done with that, I often just get rid of it. I hit the backspace button on my on my keyboard and it's gone. Uh, I can come back up here under plot and say, I want the legend back up there. And there it is again. Woo, magic. Um, gone. <laughs> Let's leave it gone this time. I'm going to say, uh, I don't like that title. The graph should probably have a title on it. So I, you see that I, you see what I did there? I double clicked on it. 
Um, again, I could have selected from the plot uh, option in the menu up here and done that. But I'm going to say uh, star 281 uh, light curve. Um, 2003 to whatever that was, 2020, I think that was. Okay. And I say, okay, there it is. Now I could look at that and I could say, oh, I don't like the size of that or the color of that. I can make this instead of 14, I can make it 18. So it's a little bit bigger. Okay. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, I can see maybe I wanted it actually smaller. Oh, that's too small. That doesn't look like a header, right? Um, so let's go back to the 12 that we had. Let's say we want this thing to be red. And let's italicize it. Not necessarily what I would do, but I'm just showing the options of what you can do with this right here. Uh, I'm going to slide this in a little closer. For some reason, my eye always prefers the, the vertical axis to have its label a little bit closer to the axis than Kaleidograph draws it automatically. I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to say magnitude because that's what that is and that's all that is. Whoa. <laughs> I'm going to watch what I'm doing. There you go. I could change the color and the style of that if I wanted to. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to call this Julian date. Uh, instead of CJD, it's going to be Julian date minus that. We're going to call it mean Julian date minus the the offset number. There you go. We got our labels, our axes labeled. We got a title on the graph. We like everything about that. Let's get rid of those those horizontal, those grid marks. I don't care for those grid marks at all. Let's actually, let's go back in here. Let's say all up here under all. Um, we can do a lot of things. Um, we can say, uh, first of all, let's um, make the, the, the outline of this uh, I, we should have clicked X or Y to do what we're doing right here, but let's make the background not transparent. Let's give it a little bit of a pop of color. Uh, let's actually not do the background. The background would be the side. Hey, let's do that. Just show you what you can do. Let's make it that, and let's make the interior that color. Okay. Maybe you like that. Maybe it drives you bonkers. I don't know, but you see how you can actually go about doing what you're doing right there. Now let's come up here. Let's check, click the X axis and let's, um, Go in and let's look at ticks and grids. And you see it's a, it says, ah, we're going to do these things in this direction. Um, so we got the grid is gray. I'm going to make the grid none. Okay. But the ticks are still in there. Say, so, okay, we got rid of the X grids. Now let's go get rid of the Y grids. We could have just selected it. We could pop back and forth in here. But I just want to keep showing you different ways to do different things here. Uh, we're going to go to ticks and grids. And we're going to get rid of that grid again. And I like that a lot better. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little woozy with the chartreuse background, but but there you go. Um, you can you can you can do whatever you want to do right there. Um, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I can expand these axes and, and contract these axes, and I'm going to show you the value of doing some of this work. So first of all, I'm, oh let's do this. Uh, magnitudes count backward. It's a strange way astronomers count things. So 13.6 is actually fainter than 12.6. So I want to reverse this axis. So I just turned this axis upside down. Uh, so that's great. So now the uh, fainter is at the bottom, even though it's a bigger number. Okay. We like that. Now, one of the things you can see, maybe a hint of a pattern in here. Uh, but one of the ways I'm going to pull out that pattern is I'm going to make the maximum value be, say, 15 and the minimum value be say 11 and really expand those axes way out. And with those ex axes expanded way out, my eye starts to see a little bit of a ripple pattern in here. Is that ripple pattern real? Uh, be very careful about that. Your eye tends to see patterns in places where patterns don't exist. And so you wanna be, we we're gonna have to do a lot of mathematical work to figure out whether a pattern like that is real, but it does gives us something to work on. It does give us a hint to say, hey, maybe we wanna check to see if there's a long secondary oscillation in this star. I like that, okay? So that's the reason to make the graph much wider than your data. But generally speaking, you wanna make the graph uh, 
you know, about as wide as your data. That This was 13.6. You don't want it to be extended too far beyond there. I don't remember what this one was down here. Uh, 12.6. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it works. We might have had some data excluded in there. and We can see what we're doing. Now, if we if we we can come in here and we can say uh, that first year out here, I don't like it. Frex in the first two years, we didn't do a great job of taking data. So let's start at 500 and see what it looks like. Okay, that's great. Uh, but let's actually do something else. Let's actually expand out here and say uh, 2888 uh, to 4444. I'm just picking numbers that are easy, quick for me to type to get a look at. Okay, so now we've expanded the time axis. And wow, we see, we see detail that we didn't see before. Uh, we see what this star is doing on a yearly basis. One year, the next year, the next year, the next year. So let's go in and look at a particular year. Now we can just drag on this thing and expand it out. We could come up here to the plot and say, uh, I want to just, I just want to drag on, I, I just want to, oops. Uh, that's not at all what I meant to do. Um, I wasn't paying attention as I was talking, but you can move things around in here if you want to move things around. You see how how you can how you can move the the, the axes around like that. Oh, that was another thing I wanted to show you. Um, the, the the axes I don't want them to be blue. Um, and so I come up here to colors and I look at this and I say I want everything to be black. Uh, black and the grids we turned off, but we're going to make those black anyway. Okay. And that was the Y axis. And let's do that with the X axis. Uh, let's come up here to colors and say, um, everything should be, um, what did we just do there? Cancel that. Um, what just happened to us? Let's come up here and do this and say colors. There we go. I clicked on the wrong, wrong thing while I was talking to you there. Uh, major ticks should be black. Everything should be black. Okay, so that looks good. Um, so this um, this is a good start here uh, to the stuff that we have going on. Um, so let's let's actually just go ahead and come up here and say uh, let's expand this to you know um, the the ticks. I don't. Let's go. Well, hold on. I don't like having no ticks between there. Um, so I should come back to this X axis and say, we need ticks and grids. Somehow the ticks got shut off when we shut the grid off. Um, so we want the, the ticks in here to say, uh, let's make a fixed number of ticks and, uh, let's do five and see what it looks like. We just play with it. Um, oh, so that's, that's changing the major ticks. Let's undo that. Let's go back to, uh, ticks to be three. Um, Picks and grids. Let's make that three again. Um, okay. And let's make minor ticks. Uh, we, we've messed that up a little bit because it's, it's made those things um, oddly, oddly numbered right there, but that's okay. Uh, let's go back over here and let's say um, ticks and grids. Um, we want minor interval tick, not none. Um, let's actually go back up here and let's turn that back to auto and let's go back here to the minor ticks in. And so there'll be ticks pointed inward and let's do an auto number right there and see what it chooses for. Maybe more than I would have chosen, 36, 37, 38, 39, four. So it's, it's, it's doing this every 50 in there. Um, so that's probably a little bit busy. So we can come back up here and select ticks and grids um, and say, uh, let's make that five instead of 10, okay? Uh, that's better. 36, 37, 38, 39, 4,000. Beautiful across there. So that tells me I want, if I just want to look at this one year right here, I can expand this thing and go from say 3,500 to 3,800. That might not be quite enough, but I think it is. Uh, 3,800 and 3,500. Okay. Ah, there it is. Beautiful. Um, so we can see, you know, we could continue to pull this on down. We could make this 3540 if we wanted to and really expand this out. So we start to see interesting things with this thing blown up this way. You start to see points that look like little outlier points, probably just noise, but things we might want to explore. Look how flat bottom does that looks. Uh, typically, these pulsating variable stars don't look flat bottom like that. So we've learned something interesting by expanding in on these years. And it started flat right here at the beginning of the year. Very interesting stuff for us. Very interesting stuff. Uh, we're going to do 
one more idea in this. Actually, I think that's enough. Let's just quit right here uh, with the graphing basics. Hopefully you've seen how to manipulate your graphs and do what you want to do. And we'll create a an, another video. I think we'll do it right now and start to get some more ideas for graphs in Kaleidograph out there. Uh, so uh, I hope this was helpful, everybody. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it.